Hi, we're coming to you from San Clemente today, which is in the heart of Southern California. A lot of moto history here, all the way from Carlsbad, which is about 30 miles south of here, uh, to Saddleback, which is just and not very far north of here. Uh, San Juan Capistrano, uh, which is just not too far from here. A lot of a lot of old moto guys grew up there, uh, so a lot of history, a lot of rich history here in Southern California. My wife and I live in Talega. Uh, just on the east side of San Clemente, so we, we love it up here. Just want to go through the process of, of this entire build. So what do you look for? How do you assess the parts? How deep do you go? Everybody has a budget. So balancing your budget, and I think my perspective in these projects is really coming at it uh, from from the angle of, you know, we all, we all stand in line at at Target or Walmart, uh, maybe Target more than Walmart, but, um, and, and, and we're a consumer society, so we're always buying stuff, right? We're always, always and it's all disposable. And uh, so, so you see these old bikes, and there's a lot that went into them, a lot of history here. And um, I think I think just, just the aspect of reviving them, getting, getting them going again, and uh, something that was gonna be thrown in the junk pile, uh, it's a real shame. So bringing it back to life again and giving it a little bit of a modern twist, um, making, it, making it all new again, making it run and look good uh, like a new bike. That's really the, the perspective I approach these projects from. So we'll be going through this entire build and I picked this engine up for about 200. And uh, so leading you through the process of that. Uh, but you know, this is a 2002, CRF 450, and if any of you know any much about uh, the history of the CR, the first CR came out in 1973, uh, the first CR 250. And the progression through the 70s was higher suspension. Uh, at that time, you had about four or five inches of travel. Uh, the first bike that I ever owned was a GT80, and uh, I'll tell you, <laughs> you felt it. So there was a lot of, of development R&D that went into bikes, bike building in the, in the, in the mid to late seventies. It was revolutionary. I, I would say that the, the greatest strides in dirt bikes was made between 1975 and 1985. I mean, it's just amazing how far they came. So, you know, the development of the monoshock around 1980, Roger DeCoster, um, Honda HRC was, was just uh, very, revolutionary in, in the development of the Honda and the works bikes uh, that they raised at that time that I grew up watching as a kid, you know, in the, the mid to early 80s. But uh, really I think uh, the the CRF was the first, this, this engine was the first of the 450 four-stroke. And uh, they didn't build the 250 four-stroke this year. They only had the 450, and it was Honda's first attempt at, at the 450. And if you, if you listen to interviews by guys like Johnny Campbell, you know, Honda's philosophy at the time was, uh, at the time of, of, the, of the 70s and 80s, all the way up uh, through the mid 90s, was that the XR was the four stroke bike, and that was the enduro bike. That was the bike that went cross country, and the, the CR was the two-stroke bike. That was the bike they raced. And if you look at, at, at all of moto history, right, they, everything was two-stroke. Uh, up to about 2001, 2002, when Yamaha and Honda started getting competitive with the four-stroke bike. So this really was the first four-stroke that became competitive. You saw Kevin Windham coming out in 2002, 2003, and he started winning races on these bikes against the two-strokes. Now the the horsepower of these bikes was around 55, 55, anywhere between uh, 55 and 55.7, uh, almost 56 horsepower. And if you look at the, if you look at the 2021 horsepower ratings on the CRF 450, it's running about 55.2. So not a big difference in horsepower, but if you look at all of the models released between 2002 and in 2021, uh, there's a lot of, of adjustments that are made. 
So in the in, in the evolution of the of the CR, right? You've got you've got 1973. The CR 250 came out, and I would say the next milestone was probably 81, 82. Development of the monoshock horsepower went from a, about 19 horsepower in 1973. So in 1987, the CR 250 was running around 35 horsepower. So from 1973 to 1987, the horsepower went from 19 horsepower to about 35. And, and really, I always think of, of 1987 was the year that the works bikes, so the works were the race bikes that were developed in the, in the mid to uh, mid 70s all the way to the mid 80s. Uh, in 1986, they had the production rule where the the Ricky Johnson, those guys couldn't race uh, work bikes. So the work, basically, the production rule forced racers to race a production bike. That came out in 1986. So all of the development that happened in the work bikes from 1975 to 1985, I believe, came out in the production bike in 1987. And, and the strides that were made in 1987 were just heads and tails above everything else. So, and if you look at the arch, architecture of the bike uh, from 1987 all the way to 1997 when they, when they switched to the aluminum frame, there's not a lot of difference in the, in the architecture and the frame. Uh, they went to the inverted fork in 1989, but really there was not a lot of difference. There was the power valve and the development of the power valve and by night or by 2001, the CR 252 stroke, they had pumping 59 horsepower. So went from 35 horsepower in 1987 all the way to 59. And if you look at the CRF 450 that came out in 2002, it was only turning 55.7 horsepower. So 55.7 on the four stroke compared to 59 horsepower on the CR 252 stroke in 2001. So, you know, in terms of, of horsepower, it was there, but rideability and, and riding a two stroke compared to riding a four stroke is night and day difference, right? So um, any of you that have ridden, ridden both know that it's, it's completely different. Um, with a four stroke, you've got a lot of low end torque that you can ride and a lot more rideable, usable power in the low end, whereas a, a two stroke, you've got to keep it wound. So you got 59 horsepower, but you've got to keep it at, you know, 8,000 RPM. So uh, to get that horsepower rating out of it. Um, but really uh, the development of the four stroke bike started with this. And so this is a Unicam engine and Honda still uses the Unicam concept, and when we take this apart and dive into this, I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. Uh, but really, uh, revolutionary. And uh, this this bike was very popular. And this, the CRF 450 and the Yamaha YZ 450F were neck and neck. If you look at Villeman racing uh, Kevin Windham, uh, and then Chad Reed coming in there. Those guys were all were all neck and neck. And if you look at Ricky Carmichael, he was still racing a two-stroke 2002 through 2004. He was with Honda at the time, and uh, Carmichael knew how to run, run, race a two-stroke, so that he he could just he could run with them. Uh, but Carmichael switched to a four-stroke by 2005, 2006. Most everybody was riding a four-stroke at that time. And they had and they had really dialed this technology in, and of course everything is is four stroke now that's raced. And I think Honda and their philosophy was moving things toward a four stroke even back in the '90s. Um, when you hear Johnny Campbell talk about uh, Bruce Ogilvy and and a lot of the development that went into uh, the early XRs, Bruce was a was a product evaluator for Honda and uh, basically developed. Uh, that that old air-cooled uh, XR race bike. So you had the XR, the development of the XR250, well, the XR200, the XR175 uh, in the late 70s, early 80s. Then then we, we stepped up to the 250, and then and then the the 500, the XR500. By the mid 80s, the XR500 was was very competitive bike, but it was all air-cooled, 
and then uh, went into the XR600, and then later on into the 90s, the XR650. And uh, if you listen to to Johnny Campbell talk about those old XRs, they they basically, because they were air-cooled and, and racing them in the Baja and just keeping them wound and keeping them wrapped out, they, they just... Uh, they just lost power. And so by the end of the race, they may have been running over 100 miles an hour for most of the race. And then by the end of the race, they were only running 80 miles an hour just because the bike would heat up. And so by the mid 90s, Johnny was basically capped out and, and um, his concept was, and he told Bruce, you know, give me a liquid cooled four stroke engine and, and I can do something with it. And that's really where this came from. And uh, if you look at the the new XR650 that really hasn't changed much since 2001. Uh, that's what it is. It's a it's a big bore uh, liquid cooled engine. So that's the technology that went into these and the progression and the history over time. Um, huge development and huge strides that were made in horsepower and rideability and suspension in the early to mid 80s. Um, you know, it tapered off, fine tuning adjustments and suspension adjustments made all through the 90s. And then um, the early 2000s was really the development of the four stroke engine. So as we get into this, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more um, as to as to what's what's behind this, this four stroke engine um, in terms of its power and its torque and its power delivery. Uh, but, but as I said, the 2021 uh, CRF 450 is running is, is running right now at 55.2 horsepower. So not a lot more horsepower. These things have plenty of horsepower. Um, it's just riding it. It's just tuning it and getting the horsepower where you want it. Um, this probably has way more horsepower than I would ever need. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a really a motocross guy myself. I go to the track and dig around. Um, but uh, I definitely like to to learn about the history and, and, and dig into the, the bones of, of what makes these bikes tick. So uh, should be a fun project and a few videos coming out and I'm going to play a little, around a little bit with the um, dual exhaust and see if I can get this thing to run on a dual exhaust. I know that there's a lot of challenges with the 450. Now the 250 project that I did, I was able to convert that over to a dual exhaust, but uh, was talking to a guy from Encinitas in San Diego just this last week. Um, lives not too far from the beach. I, I picked some some parts up from him, and he was telling me that it's it's quite a challenge to get these 450s to run with uh, these older 450s to run with a a uh, dual exhaust because there's a lot of back pressure and, and issues that that you can run into there. So we'll give it a shot and uh, see. Uh, I've got both the single and the dual, so. We'll see what we uh, what we come up with, but again, just want to build a bike that's that's sound and uh, within the budget uh, that my wife has given me on this one. Um, our 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 objective is to make money on this and not lose money. I I, I lost quite a bit of money on the last one, but uh, at any rate, I think that uh, we'll uh, hopefully be able to build a bike, reasonable bike, um, go in and make it robust, um, new piston, new rings, uh, maybe a new crank, definitely titanium valves, may have to port the head. We'll see, we hope not, but uh, we'll, we'll see what kind of condition it, it's in when I, when I pull it together. And um, yeah, so hopefully giving you some background there and, and uh, I'm excited about this project and this build and, and we're, we'll see where it leads. So stay tuned for more videos.